Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This video is about Atlantis, the idea that it's on the Rashad structure and inside Mauritania. We're going to present you with some ancient maps that can show us what this area kind of looked like up till present day. I like maps and only a few years ago I pondered my ignorance and I decided to start using Google Maps to look at the Sahara Desert and I wanted to try to find some information. I had some calling a long time ago and since then things have changed but I am a man in search of meaning and that's what Plato wrote. He wrote two books about Atlantis which can be found in the public domain. Inside those books he talked about the dimensions of Atlantis and the location and he learned this knowledge from Solon who acquired it from Sonchis, a high Egyptian priest who translated hieroglyphics from the walls of the temple, Nisan Sais. You might want to look at some of my other videos about cataclysmic destruction and of course the castle. My first video on the subject talked about the castle which is just an outline of something you can find at the center ring of the Rashad structure. It may not even be a castle but it may be something and I'd like to know more about it. Atlantis does have quite the legend and it's been around for quite a while. Most people have heard about it and in the recent film Aquaman there's a very fabulistic version of it. A lot of people associate Atlantis with this. But Plato talked about Atlantis 2,500 years ago, and when I was young, my mom was into it, and she was talking about it all the time, and I personally didn't have very much interest in it, but now here I am talking about it 40 years later. According to Plato, Atlantis was in the Atlantic. I do believe that some islands that the ancient Atlantis civilization population probably occupied existed there and may be underwater today. I mean, according to Plato, the Atlantean Navy consisted of about 1,200 ships, and I believe that many of the areas in the Atlantic Ocean could have been called Atlantis by other people, but just had some connection to the original Atlantis and definitely wasn't the capital city. Some of the older maps I'm about to cover now might even have a depiction of some of these lost islands. But I don't think it was the capital of Atlantis, and I think Plato described Atlantis as consisting of concentric circles. He wrote that it was beyond the Pillars of Hercules, and I don't think the capital would have existed anywhere inside the Mediterranean Sea. But I still think that any ancient megalithic structures discovered in the Mediterranean could have been part of that or other ancient civilizations. There are a lot of underwater megalithic structures we should be looking at, but Google Maps is gradually removing these underwater images and not showing them in their maps or making them less clear, which seems to be counterproductive for everyone. Even older physical geography maps seem to give us a better look at the ocean floor than there is today. Now this I had to piece together because it's pretty clear and there is some correlation, but when you zoom in, you get this. And when you zoom out too far you get clouds and get something like this and you have no option to remove them so I had to piece that first one together. My interest in ancient civilizations really did start when I was looking at videos such as Brian Forrester's clear evidence of ancient advanced machining and it seemed pretty clear to me that he was right. I mean I know what stone is and how hard it is to cut. I think it's very interesting how he points out there's blade marks and you can see ancient methods of rock sculpting that you just don't see in mainstream history or even existing today. I personally would not know how to do that to a rock and I definitely wouldn't know how to duplicate this with any modern example. I'm sure there are some people out there that can do it but you can see the blade marks inside there uh, moving around and it's quite interesting. So I decided to examine some older maps but I didn't know where to start. I mean, maybe in the North Atlantic or in the South Atlantic, people have talked about Antarctica being part of Atlantis. But what about the middle? You know, it was bright insight that brought up the fact that the Eye of the Sahara matched Plato's writings in so many ways. And that got me really excited. So I immediately started to research modern mainstream history sources for this. Uh, for tasks like this, I often refer to Ali Bai's video for reference. And here he shows the sea levels 200,000 years ago. And you can see the change that occurred that's 200 and that's 18,000 so there's a big difference there and by the way if you go to 20,000 it's the same so it within 20,000 and then 18,000 you see this big change look at North America look at uh, Florida look at the Great Lakes so something happened in the 18,000 
BC, before Common Era. And we also have some differences in Australia as well. Take a look at uh, what happened to Indonesia and Malaysia and Thailand. And there was supposed to be some land bridges. Now, this is mainstream science. But then it happened again in 17,000. What's happening here? You have some big differences. Don't get confused with the population. Let's go from the beginning of Impact 1, Event 1, Event 2. But you don't get a lot of data from this area here. I mean, something could have happened with sea levels or land masses could have collapsed, but there could have been a combination of both. But when you look at this 3,000 period change in two stages of sea level transformation, I think that the events are possibly correlated with the same cataclysmic events that annihilated ancient Atlantis. But not much data does come from this about rising sea levels. And instead, um, because it's so globally widespread, I really don't think that those drops in sea level could have changed due to land masses dropping. Alternative history is coming up with new information all the time. Look at this old mainstream history. This is where population started, 200,000 BC, in Africa, according to mainstream history. And then it gradually got bigger, 3,000 years, another 10,000 total, 20,000. And here we have people in Morocco and crossing over into Persia and Arabia, and then eventually through the rest of the world. However, it is being rewritten, and mainstream history has to change soon because we've got old tools found outside of Africa. Hominins, that's humans. Those are, those are maybe not Homo sapiens, but uh, part of the human tree living in China 2.1 million years ago. And even in the Philippines, 709,000 years ago. And in Africa, we have Homo sapien fossils discovered that are 350,000 years old now. So things have got to be reevaluated. One thing that is uncontestable are these megalithic structures all over the world, and some of them circle the Earth perfectly. And this circle could be an ancient equator, which the Earth was knocked off its axis, possibly from some cataclysmic event, such as a meteor or a comet strike, or maybe even just the tail of a comet for some of these uh, cataclysmic events. But I believe that to take Atlantis out, something big happened combined with flooding and land movement. Here we see what could have possibly been Earth's previous equator. It's going right through there. So the ring changes. Here's our uh, red is our current equator. And were these ancient structures, including Easter Island and the Great Pyramids, built along a previous equator? These underwater structures could have been part of that pre-cataclysmic complex. And maybe they were even built farther back. This was up in the Baltic Sea, from my understanding. And the Rashad structure, was that previously a bustling capital city? Well, in a minute, I'm going to give you some proof that it was definitely a city. Post-Atlantic, for sure. If it's true, where are all the megalithic evidence that it would have existed in the Rashad structure? A Bright Insight was the first person to show me this possible castle outline. But currently, the entire Eye of the Sahara is almost buried in sand, and there's evidence of extreme flooding hundreds of miles around it. The coast is 300 miles away from the structure. That's a lot of earth change. And according to Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson in a recent Joe Rogan interview, the ripples that you can see here would have required hundreds of feet of water for a long period of time to be created. This is right next to the Rashad structure. Even NASA has satellites that shows dust from the Sahara being fed to the Amazon forest, giving it nutrients in modern times. So these earth changes are consistently occurring. The Sahara Desert did have a prehistoric lake that was 42,000 square miles. Combined with a cataclysmic event, could the ancient lakes that existed then have some connections to this flooding? And when Jimmy from Bright Insight used his flooding software to show Mauritania turning into an island and the concentric rings even filling up with water, making it look very much like the Atlantis that was described by Plato. And the d measurements of the diameter of the Rashad structure even match Plato's dimensions. I mean, this flooding software also flooded Egypt, but the United States uh, is fitting right here into Africa. So if, so if you had flooding on the west, that doesn't mean you would have had necessarily flooding on the east. This is another island that was created by visiting Atlantis, showing the Rashad structure and the Adrar Highlands creating a possible island of Atlantis 13,000 years ago. And it wasn't until Bright Insight pointed out that even Herodotus showed evidence in his map, and this ancient map is 2,500 years old. 
So I got really interested and I had to start researching this because I love maps and I'm going to show you some of these maps that I came up with and examine them together with you. This is the Sahara Desert now. Looks pretty green, doesn't it? So, you know, when you see this picture of the Sahara Desert, you kind of forget that they do have some existing lakes. The Atlas Mountains still exist. I think this is a little bit exaggerated. I think that if you look at Google Maps, you won't see any green. But first, let's have some reference points to help us navigate these ancient maps. Uh, for example, the longitude and latitude, which are really not shown on the old maps, are still useful to us, especially the 21 degrees, 21 degrees above the equator, 21.1. Sometimes it changes to just 21, 0. And 11 is how far west it is of the Greenwich prime meridian but let's remember that the prime meridian didn't exactly exist until 1884 today's prime meridian is also not really helpful for ancient maps but unlike the equator which is determined by the axis of rotation and the tropics of cancer and capricorn the prime meridian is ultimately arbitrary and it's based on human factors that are more than just geographical also the Tropic of Cancer goes through Mauritania. I'll show you in a minute. But the Tropic of Cancer was used on maps 2,000 years ago due to the position of the sun and can be seen on a lot of the maps I'm going to show you. You can see here, and just for reference, uh, Western Sahara kind of looks like a toucan, and the Tropic of Cancer goes right to the belly of the toucan and creates like a little dog shape above it in Mauritania. By the way, I think Morocco looks like a porpoise. And Maghreb, the ancient civilization, take a look at some of these words here. We've got Maghreb, that's the combination of Mauritania, Western Sahara, Morocco, Algeria, and Libya. Also, there's words like Berber and Barbary. Berbery. And we see a lot of these different words on some of these ancient maps. Also, some of the regions, like Adrar, that's a, a big region right there. Uh, these are the departments, so you don't really see those broken down much. And a lot of these modern day regions you don't see either, but I think it's important to understand about the Adrar region, the mountains associated with it. The capital of Mauritania is uh, Nakshat, or Nakshat, and it's really the only city that pops up here in this map. You can see these small cities here, but Mauritania, where, oh, there we are. Yeah, we see a string of cities here leading up to the Eye of the Sahara, and then we see the Senegal River below it. So we've got cities, but a lot of the cities disappear when you back out. So this map from Google only shows one city when it's pulled out this far. But there are a few more zooming in. Another physical feature that can help us is the peninsula here. I've been calling it the hook and the hook is 594 kilometers away but it's almost a horizontal line so that's kind of useful. In, ma in maps without borders it's a good way to estimate where the eye of the Sahara would be located. Now here it's called La Guerra. that's today's name and some Arabic name too but on older maps it's called Cape Blanco. So I'm going to be talking about Cape Blanco quite a bit. Here's a Cape Blanco in English. Uh, this is a modern map, but the word Cape Blanco is in English. And it, it's been called Cape Blanco for quite a few years. And you can just follow this border right out to the eye of the Sahara. So if you have a border of Western Sahara, or it's called the, the a lot of other names, if you have that borderline, you can follow it right out to the eye. And it's useful if there is a border. But if there's not a border, there's a lot of other physical indicators. Cape Blanco, Blanco, Capo Blanco is here. And it's actually mostly Western Sahara, but part of it is Mauritania. And that's at the top of what I call the rough coast, the rough bay. And it's quite rough, and we've got a few things here. And then below this little tiny peninsula, which is called Cape Miric, we have the smooth coast that goes down and that's the Senegal River and there's Nokshat which is the capital of Mauritania. This other stuff here, Dakot, that point, this was called Cape Verde. Let me show you. We have all these different points. So this one is called Dakla or Point Sintra, Point de Sintra, Punto de Sintra, right? That's Spanish. So 
Punta de Sintra, which we don't ever really see very much. Uh, but we also have Cape Barbas, which is here. That doesn't have a name in the modern map, not showing at least. Uh, Cape Blanco, I talked about that. Cape Murick, I think this is important. So let's call that Cape Murick. And we have down here, uh, Nashat going down to St. Louis and the Delta of the Senegal River, which is the lower border of Mauritania. And another important thing are the islands. We have the, the Canary Islands up here, and we have the Cape Verde Islands, which Dakar points at them, but it's also called Cape Verde. So there's a lot of old names. You can see it right there, Cape Verde. And all of these physical attributes can help us. Let's take a look at some modern day maps. This is uh, a local tourist map uh, done in 2015. And it's a kind of looks like it was put together pretty rough, but I guess it's better than nothing. And you can see the eye of the Sahara right there. But we also have some older maps, some antique, I would call it antique, right? Not really ancient maps. And one of them goes back uh, as far as 2300. That's more of the ancient the Ptolemy map. I'll show you that later. But I do have a, a, a list of where I got most of these maps from, but not all of them. Now in the 1900s we have this map and what it shows to me is just the colonization of Africa. I don't find that quite useful, especially since up close you don't really see there is something going on here that the reason they wanted to colonize it and but th that's Cape Verde. There's the Cape Verde Islands. There's the Canary Islands. So you know it's going to be between these two islands. And if you look here, you can kind of make out well, this must be uh, the hook, and then the rough bay, and then the smooth bay. So this is really just the capital of Mauritania. Why they stretched out to here, I'm not sure. That's another video. There are some water sources here. That is the river of Senegal right there. So uh, that's probably all done for water. I think it's more of a colonist the colonization of different countries but other maps from 1900 shows that western sahara was called the rio de oro and this is pretty good this map is pretty correct with its outline but if you follow the border out you do see a drawer but you don't see anything else except for the word a drawer and i can't even make out what those say but we know that the eye is right here so i'm not going to really pay attention to maps from the 1800s but I do want to show you a couple again we can see Point Blanco here going out to that looks like the eyebrow of the Sahara here's a close-up of that that map was made in 1880 and this one was made by the same guy oh actually uh, I'm not sure that guy made two maps and you can see here in 1852 if you follow the coin the point blank out you see the city of Hoden so we've already got something new here right the city of Hoden and I'm going to show it to you here because the city of Hoden there isn't very prominent but here you can see it's the really the only thing there let's get way in there and there's point I'm sorry Cape Blanco and we go in and suddenly we have this Hoden and not and I guess the dot is there but there's no rivers leading up to it there's no rivers in fact the only river you can see here is uh, the Senegal River again this next map it's a little bit different it's a little more clear you can see Hoden is lower than last time right before Hoden was up here if you follow I guess if you're following the line it's still lower you have the gum forests you have uh, some other whatever that is and then you have this little river that shows up right near Cape Murick and I do believe that there's a point there that's the rough so when I called it Cape Merrick, I could have been wrong because uh, I thought it was talking about the point that was north of it. Let me show you another one. In the 1800s, we have quite a few. This one shows a river going up there. It's not very clear. This one here from 1787 shows nothing at all. Look, it's an angry guy. There's Punto de Sintra. There's, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Anyways, you see the Tropic of Cancer right here, and you know that it's below the Tropic of Cancer. The tropic of Cancer is 23.5 degrees, so we're talking 21 degrees. If this is 20, if this is 20 for some reason, and it could be in the 1700s, um, and by the, but the prime meridian's not correct. 
So don't ignore that because the prime meridian would be over here somewhere. So this is showing Cape Blanco, a rough coast, a point, a smooth coast. So Nashat is about here and there's no river at all. So the river literally disappeared. We had this here, I don't know what that says, rivers St. John maybe? But in this map you don't see it. Oh, I'm sorry, not that map. That map you do see it, but it's so unclear. I couldn't get a clear version of that map. Here we see that there's nothing. Well, let's keep going back and let's find a couple of other things. Okay, here we see uh, the Canary Islands and the Cape Verde Islands. And there's the Senegal River right there. But these borders are completely different. Look, this is the whole top up to the top of Africa and it's called Desert Barbary or Barbara. This is called Barbary. So, you know, we've got a completely different government kingdom making maps here. This is 1737. You can read what he wrote there. I could try to translate that. Uh, stereographic projections. Legitimate stereographic. Anyway, Hoxha means um, next to but it doesn't matter because we're just looking at their map. And as you can see, this is point blank. Wait, where's point? There's point, the Cur Cape Verde. Yeah, that's point Verde, or Cape Verde, sorry. Cape Verde's here. Cape, this is Capo Blanc. So that's Capo Blanco right there. And going down, you can kind of see some action. Let's get a little closer here. You've got that little river, and it goes up. But what's that? Is that Hoden? A yeah, completely different name. But you've only got one river. I really want to get farther. And, and this one, I, I just showed you that the prime meridian is not the same as our prime meridian. Here it is here, closer. It's got to be a river, but where is the eye? Is that it? Let's keep moving and take a look at something else. This is a little more clear, but it still shows Barbaria. Barbaria. And here, this is a Bille du Lerdio. Anyways, this is 1710. And here is the Cape Blanco. Let's go to my close-up here. This is Cape Verde. It's kind of curved for some reason. It's pointing to the Cape Verde Islands. That's definitely not our goal. That is the Senegal River. But if you go up here, we can see Cape Blanco. And this is the 20 degree line. If that's, if this is, the Tropic of Cancer. This must be the tw 20 degree line right here. You can actually see two rivers. Hoden is here and it says Galata or Hoden if I'm not mistaken. Is this English? Is this Timbuktu? Tumbuk? So that's definitely uh, Mali over there. There's some salt mines. There's some mountains. And there are two rivers. One, two. And there's some kind of a city there, and there's kind of some kind of a little city or castle there. Usually a castle means a city, right? Okay, before 1700, 1644, it says here Mare Atlan. And we've got the Canary Islands, and we've got the Cape Verde Islands. There's Cape Verde. So there's Punto Blanco right there. You can see a river below that going to Hoden. Let's get closer. Yeah, and you can see a little city now. The city must have moved. But what happened to that other? Oh, there it is. That other river is up there. That's right by the Tropic of Cancer. And we've got Gualada region. I think that R-E-G means region. And we've got, where's a, a, a drawer? And who did it? That's a Blau. Bleu. Maybe he's French. I mean, this whole area was controlled by the French at that time. Now, here is uh, the... 1584 Abraham Ortelius Atlas. Now look at what we got here. This is big changes. I mean, well, those two are, that's the Senegal River, but you look at the other rivers going along the coast. Now we have several going all around, and you can see some interior lakes as well. Our area, you've got Cape Blanco and Cape Verde, and you can see not really sure where the the capital is but what you can see is this river going all the way up to Hoden and if you follow that out it's showing Hoden existing where our proposed Atlantis location is now that's interesting look at all these rivers we've got one two three above K 
Cape Blanco, and one right at the Tropic of Cancer, and two below the Tropic of Cancer before Cape Blanco. And then we have this long one that's kind of at the end of the rough coast, the rough bay, I called it, and then where's the smooth bay? And there's Cape Verde. So you, it's kind of hard, but I mean, come on, look at that. There's a city, there's a name, Hoden, Hoden, right? And here's a couple of similar maps. This shows Hoden right on the river. It's actually a related map. This one has a swordfish in it. Look at that swordfish. And the other one doesn't have the swordfish, but it shows Hoden right on the river. Look at this. This is a close-up of the top part. Same map, but look at all these. I call these sperms, I know. Uh, but look at the reason why, because they don't seem to go anywhere. Like most rivers, they go to the ocean, right? But these internal rivers, they're going all over the place. This one, Map of the World 1570, that's the same guy. So I think we're going to see the same information here. Let's get a little closer. Now this is... This is Okay, that's the, the one we just saw, his Africa. And then this is one, I think it's related. Let's get in there and take a look at this one. Well, here you can see the Senegal River. And you can see Hoden with a little tiny river here that's not getting too close to it. What other names do we recognize? Cape Blanco, follow that over, and you get to Hoden. Pretty simple, right? That's the 20 degree line. We've got uh, the Cape Verde with an with a river above it, and we have one river, that same river that goes to Houghton. Now this map, 1554, Sebastian, it's got uh, definitely the, Ho I'm going to call this the Houghton River, Houghteni. But the interesting thing about this, and I'm pretty sure that this is a little too far south, how did they discover this? Did they go from here to there? Uh, of course, you can go to Hodeni. By the way, where's this island now? That island's gone, right? Cape Verde. There's the Senegal River here. It's right above Cape Verde, but you have another river here. Is that part of the Senegal River? Or is that part of something else? And then what's this? This Negrita, Negrite, Niger. I mean, now they're calling that country Libya. So where's Niger? A map here. This map is from, yeah, it looks like it's the same map, some kind of a relationship. There's the 1554 map, and then this one is a little bit different. They, they all show Africa as being kind of um, pointy and flat and like a rectangle at the top. That's the, the other side of Gibraltar. There's Spain right there. Now, this is the Ribeiro map. It was 1529, and it's got 3D. That's the best I can get, and I zoomed in, and it got kind of blurry. But one thing you can see, and let's look at this, this is Cape Verde, and this is Cape Blanco, and this is the rough coast, and you have what looks like, you know, relief decoration for trees and mountains, but over here you can see what looks like a city. I don't think that's part of this, because look down here, do you have a city there? You have more trees? No. This map was taken from, it's got Chinese characters on it, but it was actually drawn by an Italian guy. Let's take a look. It says here the Italian guy was named Matteo Ricci, but he had Chinese collaborators and they did all the writing. Now this one shows Africa and Europe on the left and the Americas. See, so if we're seeing the Americas, we know this was after Columbus discovered so-called America. These maps didn't appear until after his expedition. Now let's get a little closer to that and see uh, here we have the the islands, and so these three, that's the delta going to Senegal. There's some kind of a major map, a major lake here. And I do know one thing, that this is showing the Juin Fu Hao for pronunciation, but honestly, that's not that character. That's not Shi. So it's Ya as far as I know. So this is kind of interesting. It shows one river. I think that's our Hodeni River right there. And now this is one of the maps. It says it's the most expensive map in the world because it's America's birth certificate. 1507, right after Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And there are a few types of it. This one is from 1492. But I think that that's kind of a rounded up number. Let's assume that. Here's Africa from one of those maps. Nile River going through. I mean, where's Senegal River? Is that the Senegal River? Maybe that's the Senegal River because it's kind of... I don't really like this map. 
and you can kind of you, it's hard to make out a lot of stuff in here I tried looking up different versions of the map but it gave me the same results if this is the Senegal River then what are these islands here if this is Cape Verde Islands this is Cape Verde down here and that's their point so we got a lot of different rivers showing in here they certainly aren't roads and if that is uh, Senegal River down here I don't know this must be it right there if this is the Senegal River Delta what's this going through Sahara Desert south of all the local mountains this is the 1459 Fra Maro map. And of course it was upside down originally. But zooming into it, you can see that Africa kind of looks like a, the head of a cat or a lion. And they deliberately wrote those there to make it look like an eyeball. Look at those nostrils. You have two nostrils, you have teeth. But what I really think is happening here is you're going down the coast and then you're cutting in. This is the Senegal River, clearly Senegal. And so if that's Senegal River, then we really need to focus on this area right here. And let me get into another map that's very similar. This is right side up. See, if you need to read the writing, you have to turn it back over. But uh, when we get in here, it's kind of hard to see these islands here kind of represent maybe the Canary Islands more than they do the Cape Verde Islands. Not really sure about this map. I kind of thought maybe these were parts of the Senegal River but it's just not clear enough. And then this map was from 1505. And now I think that this was based on one of the early, early maps because it's showing a really simple island in the middle of the Sahara Desert. This is a Senegal River right there, but these rivers are connecting to those rivers. So this is a mountain range that's separating them. You don't see any rivers here though, so maybe they consistently dried up. I heard that it was a desert. But when you see how close these things are together, it's kind of curious. But then again, this didn't finish, so we don't know what was happening there. This is a Hereford map of Mundi, 1300. And uh, this one also was kind of upside down. If you look at it here, it's kind of hard to figure out where Africa is. It had to be turned 90 degrees. This is Africa. You can see quite a few rivers, but um, you see the, the Nile connecting maybe to this thing if this is the senegal river it's hard to detect so kind of hard to figure it out you've got a, a lot of these sperm rivers where there's a big head and they go into nowhere moving to the 1300s we don't have anything 1200s we have something it's the culture exchange al idrisi map and that's 1154 and this map shows uh what does that show well, you can kind of see that there's uh, the Senegal River. I assume that's Senegal. And you can see this river up here below the Atlas Mountains. This one is the Tabula Rogeriana map. It's got a lot of Arabic on it. You can see Africa's here, the Spain. I guess these things are just mountain ranges. Here's another close-up. That's got to be the Senegal Rivers. And now back down to the ancient maps. In the year 200, that's not so ancient, is it? We have this person kind of doing the same thing. This looks like it was based on the Herodotus map. We have a lot of different words you might recognize, like Guaditana. But what I'm kind of curious about is these islands. I already showed you this map because of this island next to Spain. I mean, the Pillars of Hercules are here. You, you don't know any island that's right next to them, do you? Maybe the one I showed you earlier that's underwater. Ptolemy's Geography, 150 B.C. And you can see here, Atlas Mountains, boom. And here you've got this weird river complex that's in the middle of the Sahara Desert, probably part of Senegal, in, in my opinion. I mean, the Senegal River. But this shows the Senegal River entry right here. There's another version of it. You can see it here. And the Ptolemy map, which is pretty famous, shows Atlas Mountains here, Mauritania, <laughs> all the way up there and what looks like the entry to the Senegal River here because that would be Cape Verde right there and that would be I'm not sure what this is we've got a river here we've got mountains in there we've got another what looks like an ancient lake here oh, maybe these waters are going underground I mean there was an ancient lake bed right here's another version of that that's not we can't see anything on that this one I, I looked it up and it, I don't think it belongs here but it came up as a Ptolemy but what you can see is that there's this thing here let's assume those are mountains because that certainly isn't a river and it's showing a smaller river right here 
I mean, how can this thing be bigger than the Nile by Egypt? So I think they just recreated our, our shape of Africa, but they stuck those mountains in there. They had a little knowledge, but what you see here is this going, well, let's move in a little closer. You see this mountain going all the way to the end of the continent. Okay, what do we got here? This, this one, we're seeing um, pretty much, this is the Ptolemy map. It's just one of the, the earlier versions of it. And we're seeing uh, a, a lot of different stuff, like lakes here, interior lakes, no entry points for Senegal. This one right here, you can see Africa here and you can see Spain that's what helps me in Italy those are correct this might be a lot older than ancient and it, but the thing is, is it shows what looks like a mountain range and a, a pass through but no river those are rivers here there's a river there this is the top of Africa so the Sahara Desert wasn't so old was it and last but not least we'll look at Herodotus map he did this map in 450 BCE. That means that you have to add that to 2000. If any map's ancient, it's this map. This is the most ancient map. And what do you have? You have what Ancient Insight pointed out was that the word Atlantis is right there. Atlantis with a question mark next to it. Why would they put that there? Maybe they thought it was the Atlantis that everybody knows but doesn't talk about. And this now is the Orbis Herodotus, Herodoti. And you can basically see the same thing, Atlantis, Antarantis, means King Atlas. So this is really what Bright Insight did for me. He showed me this, this map here. And this map that I showed you from 1505 looks very similar to that one. So if that's true, I think that maybe this guy copied it from some ancient scroll. But you keep seeing Atlantis on the Herodotus map. This one just says Atlas. It doesn't say Atlas Mountains, but maybe the Kingdom of Atlas. And that's it. So, wow, it took me 45 minutes to show you my maps. I'm going to try to shorten that, and we'll see where we stand. Other than that, have a great day.